Today in the five minute saltwater aquarium guide, we answer what type of tank is best for a new reefer, glass boxes, reef ready, or all in ones. All that's coming up. Hey, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV. The goal of the five minute guide is providing a solid recipe and technique that produces reproducible, high percentage pass to successful reef tanks you can be proud of. Today we answer what type of tank is right for you. At the end of this, I am confident you will be able to make the decision that's right for your desires. There are three basic options, a simple glass box, a glass box plumbed to a sump down below, often referred to as reef ready, or an all-in-one or AOI, which has a sump incorporated in the back of the tank. All very different approaches to a saltwater tank. I think 80% or so of the multi-year reefers out there have an aquarium with overflows that go down to a sump where all the filtration is or reef ready tank but that's often more of a journey than it is a starting point. Starting with a simple glass box, I can tell you my first tank was a 90 gallon glass box with no sump and just some hang on gear. I think it's likely fairly common because it's dramatically less expensive when you look at the total system cost. With the no sump approach, the filters hang on the back of the tank, heaters and other equipment go directly in the tank. Visually not the most attractive approach, but it could be less than a half to a third of the cost and eliminates the complexity of plumbing a tank. Again, I did this on my first 90 as well as my first 40 gallon breeder in my house. It's just an easy, affordable path to starting reefing. The 40 gallon breeder we actually drilled for an overflow later and upgraded to a sump so there is an upgrade path down the road. The second tank type is a reef ready tank with the overflows and the sump. This approach will achieve the following three things for your tank. One, you get all the heaters and most of the cords out of the tank as well as all the hang on gear and hide them down below the tank in the sump. Two, the sump or reef ready approach will allow you to use higher performance gear and different types of filters that don't work as well as hang on versions like refugiums, larger protein skimmers, filter socks and fleece rollers. Third, it increases the water volume, which makes the tank more stable. With something like a 14 gallon, it might increase the water volume by as much as 50%, meaning 50% more stable. That effect tends to scale down and be less pronounced as the tanks get larger. There are two common ways to do a sump based tank. One, buy it with a reef ready tower already installed, or drill a tank and add an external overflow. Drilling a tank is really easy and there are 100 videos out there on how to do it, so don't let that intimidate you. Between those two, I think the choice is, do I want a tower in the tank which takes up space, but I can mount the tank flush with the wall, or do I want an external overflow where there's almost no footprint inside the tank itself, but the tank needs to be a few inches from the wall. That's just your choice, but I normally take the time to drill the holes and go external, just because I find the larger towers to take up more room than I'd like in the tank. Now looking at the all-in-one or AOI approach where the sump is in the back of the tank or a hybrid approach, in this case, it's a compartment in the back that houses most of your pumps, heaters, and filters. It also makes it easier to run bags of carbon or other filter media, even filter socks or UV down the road. All-in-one tanks themselves cost a lot more than a standard tank of the same size, but also much cheaper than an overall sump-based approach. The innovative Marine Nouveau series, specifically the 40-gallon Fusion, being a great starter tank. The E series from Red Sea being what I call the best all-in-one approach and the simplest tank to set up comes with a protein skimmer, a stand, filter socks, filter media bag solution, a return pump, power management solution, and even a light which will work for almost any type of coral you'd like to maintain. Also the cleanest looking because there's a flip up guard that hides almost all of the equipment. The E series is also a bit more future proof because it comes pre-drilled and plumbed if you ever want to add a traditional sump down below. End of the day, simple glass box aquarium, reef ready with sump, or all in one, it all just comes down to what you want to put into this in terms of time and resources. I know simple aquarium with hang on equipment is what I did with my first couple of tanks just because it fit my budget and I bet the most common path. However, if you're asking what is the best solution or what I believe to be the highest percentage path to success, not just terms of a thriving reef tank, but also avoiding the cost of perpetual upgrades, I think it's the E series from Red Sea. These all-in-one tanks come with stands, look sharp in any room, hide all the gear so they look clean, avoid the complexity and noise of plumbing a tank, and other than sand, rock, and a heater, come with everything needed to get started so a new reefer doesn't have to get lost in all the gear choices. The 45-gallon E170 is ideal for kitchens, office, similar rooms, and the 69-gallon E260 ideal for living rooms, finished basements, and entryways that can support larger tanks. The E-Series are just a good mix of size, ease, and aesthetics for a first tank that lasts a long time. That of course leads to the next logical question, once I actually have the actual tank, what kind of other gear do I need to set up a saltwater aquarium? The entire saltwater aquarium guide is always available here in this playlist for binge watching, but the list for the most important gear for a reef tank and next steps is here, so check it out. 